Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We had some uh, technical difficulties this morning, but the devil is a lie, and uh, we are going live on Facebook uh, to bring this, this great message and this good word uh, to you. Amen. Thank you for joining. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> we're ready, and uh, I certainly apologize to everybody uh, for the technical delay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Identity Theft broadcast. Uh, we got some good, uh, a good word this uh, today. I am excited about this word, actually. Well, as I'm trying to to you know navigate my way through the technology of all things, I'm just excited. We got some William Murphy in the background. Uh, shifting the atmosphere. It happens to be one of my favorite uh, songs. I don't own the rights to this music, uh, but oh, I'm sorry, his name is Jason Nelson. My apologies. Uh, it's shifting the atmosphere, and I'm excited. Um, this morning, we're going to be talking about binding the strong man. Who and what is it? We're going to be talking about sucker roots. What's a sucker root? We're going to talk about an unsurrendered heart and unhealed hurts and unresolved issues. Today's broadcast is about, uh, it's about you, and it's about you rewinding the tape of your life, amen. Um, so we're gonna turn down our, our praise and worship music. You know, we're trying to set the atmosphere this morning. So again, good morning, saints, sinners, and decision makers, it's your girl, Minister Weston, and I want to personally thank you for connecting with me this morning. I know it's early for some, but God uh, wanted to welcome you to the table. God and I wanted to welcome you to the table. So I'm going to need you to stretch it on out. I'm going to need you to swing them legs out of bed and throw them covers off. I'm going to need you to grab you a hot cup of java. I got mine, okay, uh, a tablet or a pen or pencil to uh you know to jot down some notes or if you have any questions or any prayer requests my email is right there it's on the bottom located on the bottom of the screen and if this series has been a blessing to you if you're catching the replay peace and blessings i pray that this message bless your life invite a friend or share it on your timeline cuz you know it's not about me it's about this message getting to every family member, getting to the people in your congregation or your pastor that has a hard time or a difficult or is in a difficult place of understanding uh, the in totality what the LGBT community is facing and going through. And so just being transparent, I have this platform to give you guys some of this gospel game and I hope you're ready. So if this is your first time listening to the Identity Theft series. This series is taken from the book um, I wrote entitled Identity Theft, The False Inheritance, Exposing the Counterfeit God. And you can buy that on Amazon. Or if you're in the Sacramento area, uh, swing by phase on 20th Barbershop, uh, get a fresh cut or a lineup, and grab a signed copy of the book, amen. I'm super excited about today's topic, entitled Symptoms Versus Disease breaking Satan's cycles because I believe that uh, by the end of this broadcast you'll be able to identify the root causes of unhealthy patterns that have caused you to make unhealthy choices and with the help of a mighty God you can break Satan's cycles in your life amen amen so to some this may sound uh, scripted but I have so much to cover in this series you guys that I don't want to forget uh, or leave out anything. Uh, and so this, you know, it's not like I'm picking random topics, you know, off the top of my head. Uh, but but they're topics that pertain to the identity theft series. Um, you know, and so my testimony may not be your struggle. Okay. But just like a pot of gumbo, where no ingredient stands out from the other, so are the conditions of sin. 
just because I'm a Christian, it doesn't mean that I'm free from sin. So you're going to have to apply these principles of this message where they're needed in your life situation. Amen. Also, let me clarify uh, that the type of sin that I'm referring to is called willful sin. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to sin. Sin. I'm talking about premeditated sin, okay? You know, the I ain't got caught yet sin. Hello, somebody. The kind of sin that, you know, you start to book a room downtown at the Marriott and you meet Sister Cornbread for a late night kiki type of sin. I guess nobody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm talking about leading praise and worship, then going home to get on porn, porn sites type of sin. Uh-oh. Now, I'm not judging. We just talking. We just talking. Okay, I think this, this might be a good time to pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this morning. This is the day that you have made. I thank you for every heart and mind uh, that has joined, uh, joined this broadcast on today, Father God. I, I thank you for your word. You said that your word is like a consuming fire, and your, and your word is like a hammer that smashes. So, Father, we invite the Holy Spirit to come in, to, 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 to smash, to hammer, Lord God, to break, to bust every illusion that the enemy would hold over the minds uh, of his people, Lord God. We are looking for women to be loose. We are looking for men to be set free. We are looking for families and marriages uh, to, to, to be united, God. Holy Spirit, you have access to this place. Come in and cause havoc. You know how you do it. Father, I thank you for every soul uh, that you have called to this broadcast today. Now, Father, I ask that you would give me a teacher's anointing this morning. I ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and thank you that you've given me the tongue of the learned, that I may know how to speak a word in season to those that are weary. I thank you, God, that you've given me the tongue of the love, that when I speak, God, every syllable might heal. Holy Spirit, again, you've been granted access. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I want to talk about my, uh, my viral infection uh, last week. Last, about a few weeks ago, I had a really, really bad viral infection, family. I mean, I was down for two weeks. And for about seven or eight days, right, I began treating the symptoms of that cold. I mean, family, I had everything from Theraflu, uh, <laughs> Mucinex, Vicks, ginger, garlic, tea. I stayed hydrated. Uh, I, I used every over-the-counter medication to treat the symptom of my cold. But it wasn't until I went to the doctors. Amen. It wasn't until I went to the doctor and he gave me an antibiotic to kill the virus that was attacking my body. Then I was able, amen, to, to break free and to break that thing. So what are you talking about, Minister Weston? So allow me to be transparent, okay, as it pertains to same-sex attraction. The reason I continued to relapse and found myself sitting in bars with a mouthpiece, you know, that had Sister Cornbread questioning her sexuality, is I was treating the outward manifestation of the sin and not dealing with the inward cause. What do you mean, Minister Weston? Well, I'm, family, I'm so glad that you asked me. Let me give you an example. I started to, you know, flat iron my hair. I wore MAC makeup. And occasionally, I would slip on a few skirts because I was trying to fix the outward symptoms of same-sex attraction. The church was happy, okay? But internally, I was miserable because I knew that my deliverance was not in my clothes. It was not in the MAC makeup. It was not in the flat, line, uh, the flat iron. And it definitely wasn't in my leadership title or the very expensive MAC makeup products. In fact, none of these things arrested my desire for same-sex attraction because I was treating the symptoms and not the disease. I was not binding the strong man, which leads me uh, to the word sucker root. Okay, if you got a pen and pencil, you might, you might want to write this down. It's called a sucker root. And this is so dope how the Holy Spirit gave me this revelation and directed me uh, to a, what a sucker root is, okay? So a sucker root, family, 
It engrafts itself around the plant. It doesn't originate from a seed, but instead it grows from the base of the root of the plant at a certain distance away from the plant. And if, and if it's not remo removed, check this out. If that sucker root is not removed, it will, uh, it will suck away the plant's energy. I'm going to say that again. If that sucker root is not removed, Okay, it will suck. It, it will begin to suck away the plant's energy. Have you ever found yourself in an unhealthy relationship where you felt as though that person was sucking the life out of you? I know somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Okay, this is one of the strategies of the enemy. He slowly, without warning, like cancer, he begins to infect your body and will, sucking the life out of you until you become numb and nonchalant and non-productive. And this is why you can never break free because you haven't detected the root cause of your issue. In order to kill a snake, you got to cut off his head. The Lord God sent me to tell you that he wants to take his spiritual forces and go deep into the place of the infection. And not just treat it, family. He wants to totally destroy it, glory to God. God wants to heal you so that so so not even the residue of the disease is noticeable. Somebody say hallelujah. Let's let's crack open the word of God and see what God has to say about the matter. Because you know me, I, I, I'm Bible girl. I love uh, I love the Bible. I love the word of God. I love to see how and, and, and how uh, you know, God wants us to say that there's nothing uh, common. There's nothing that you're going through that I haven't even experienced. Or there's nothing that we have gone through, family, that uh, isn't really recorded in the word of God. And so let's go to 1 Samuel. Uh, if you have your Bibles uh, or your smartphone tablets, I hope, uh, you know, you don't even have to get out to bed. You can just, you know, download the Bible app on your smartphone device and crack open your word and get some of this good gospel game. Amen. So let's go to 1 Samuel. That's in the Old Testament. That's in the beginning of, uh, of, uh, of the Old Testament. I mean, uh, it's kind of like at the middle. Let's say it's at the middle. 1 Samuel. Okay, it's after Ruth. It's right after Ruth. Okay. 1 Samuel 1. I mean, 1 Samuel 15, verses 2, 3, and 8. That will be 1 Samuel, if you're writing this down, chapter 15, verses 2, 3, and 8. 1 Samuel, okay, chapter 15, verses 2, 3, and 8. Okay, again, God wants to utterly heal. And not even leave the residue. If you have it, say amen. Amen. All right. First Samuel 15, verses 2 and 3. Uh, I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version um, so that it gives just a, a, a more in-depth and a more illuminating uh, definition and description of the word. Okay. It says, thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he set himself against him on the way when Israel came up from Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and completely destroy everything they have. Do not spare them, but kill both man, woman, child, infant, ox, sheep, camel, and donkey. Now let's go down to verses 8 and let's see what happened. Okay, go down to verses 8. And the Bible says, he captured Agag. The king of the Amalekites, a lie, though he totally destroyed all the rest of the people with the sword. OK, so in other words, Saul was charged. God was saying, hey, Saul, I want you to go over there and I want you to destroy the Amalekites. OK, I don't want you to leave nothing. Now, you might, un you, you know, you OK, this is going to be good. God, when God tells you to get rid of something in your life. That's exactly what he means. Okay? Let me tell you something. I'm just going to be transparent before we go to Deuteronomy 20, 16 through 18. That's Deuteronomy 20, 16 to 18. When God tells you that, that he wants you to destroy everything, 
that he doesn't even want the, the residue of your past or the pain or the virus. He doesn't even want that to come back on your life. That's exactly what he meant. I was holding on to just a little part of my past. I would look from the crown of my head till about my ankles and I looked down on my feet and I said, uh-oh, I'm still holding on to a little bit. Who am I talking to? Go, let's go to Deuteronomy. If you have it, say amen. I'm, I'm, I'm right behind you. Deuteronomy uh, is, is part of the Torah. It's the five books in the Old Testament. We're going to go to Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. We're going to go to verses 16 through 18. If you have it, say glory to God. Thank you for all those that are stopping in and tuning in. We're taking this uh, from the book Identity Theft. This is the Identity Theft series. We're taking a book, and now we're doing a teaching curriculum. So if you're stopping by or if you're listening on the replay, God bless you, and I pray for a breakthrough in your life. I pray that this message blesses you. And we're on right now Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, verses 16 through 18. This is what the Bible says in the Amplified Version. Only in the cities of these people that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. You shall not leave alive anything that breathes. Mm. But you shall what? Utterly destroy them. Look, look at what God is telling you. Okay? Look at, now listen to what God is telling, telling Israel. He says, I want you to destroy the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Just as the Lord God has commanded you. Why? Here comes the answer in 18. So that they will not teach you to act in accordance with all the detestable practices which they have done in worship and service. Listen, for their gods and in this way God uh, and in this way cause you to sin against the Lord your God. Uh, you might read this and say, wow, you know what I'm saying? Is this a form of genocide? Why did God want everyone and everything uh, that breed destroyed? Because he didn't want a trace or even the residues of those pagan practices that were a curse, detestable and sinful to affect Israel and their future. God knew Israel's future just like he knows your future. And he's doing everything that he can, okay, without interfering with your free will choice to protect you. Some of us uh, that can see pretty well can see down the block. However, not only can God see down the block, but he can see around the corner in your life. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, And another strategy of the enemy is to exploit childhood traumas, you know, such as betrayal and rejection, abandonment, rape, molestation, and emotional abuse. As he, and he uses those as an entrance door. Okay, to coil around your purpose and your destiny. It, and it keeps you exhausted, blind, and dizzy so that your choices continue to yield unhealthy, success, uh, successful results. Somebody say, I'm tired of spinning, Lord. I'm just, Jesus, I'm just tired of spinning. I'm just tired of spinning. In order for you, family, to destroy Satan's cycles and bind the strong man, you must invite Christ into your heart so he can give you the strength to gently rewind the tape of your life so you can take your spiritual axe and uproot the seed of the enemy that is slowly sucking the joy, the hope, the purpose, and the peace from your life. I know for certain, okay, that rewinding the tape of life's past, you know, it can be painful. You know, facing the painful memories that you've tucked away uh, in your pain file is difficult. Trust me, I know. But unresolved issues and unhealed hurts, it leaves a residue of unforgiveness, which over time, okay, and if you don't deal with it, it develops into a callous. And it, and it develops a, uh, it develops into a callus over your heart, and it makes it difficult to trust, to see, 
and to hear Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. This is the cycle that Satan wants you to stay in. But I stopped by this morning by way of Facebook to tell somebody that may be facing some storms that there is a mighty God that is a storm rebuker. Hallelujah. Remember when you were a little child and your parents, you know, would grab your arms uh, and spin you around and around and around and around and around. And then when they stopped to let go of your hand, you just couldn't get your balance. You was like, whoo. So God is saying, I've seen the devil spinning you to the point where it's become a normal condition for you. Let me tell you, there's, there's nothing normal about feeling like your life is spinning out of control. Who am I talking to this morning? You're, you know, you've, you've tried everything to fill the void in your life. You've applied makeup over the bruises. You stay late on your job. So you don't have to face your wife and family. And as a man, you don't have a place to cry. And as a woman, you go home after wearing that smile in front of your co-workers or employees. But when you get home, you bury your face in your pillow. And your pillow is drenched with tears. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. My testimony, it may not be your life story. Only you uh, know the unsurrendered places in your life. Only you can rewind the tape. But I'm here to be a witness that God will give you the victory to face and defeat every Goliath in your life. I'm trying to tell you, God will give you the victory to face every mountain, every obstacle, every pain, every situation that you've been faced with. If you tap God in, last week we talked about WWF wrestling, okay? If you old school, or I don't know even know if they still have it, but if you old school, my father used to take me to the Memorial Auditorium, and I would say, Rocky Johnson and Pat Patterson. I might be telling my age, it's okay. I earned my grade. But he would take me to go see Rocky Johnson and Pat Patterson. And, and they would be in the ring and, and you know, getting their butt whooped. And that one guy would, would, would reach out his hand to, to, you know, to, to, you know, to get the other guy to tap him in. And then that's what God is saying. Please tap me in to your life. Tap me into the void. You tried every over-the-counter you know, medications, and they have failed. Try God. Tap him into your life and your situation. The Bible says in the Amplified Version to cast all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, and once and for all, cast them on him because why? He cares about you. And he cares about you with the deepest affection, and he watches over you like a hen would do his baby chickens. Trust and believe me. When we're talking today, I want you to, to rewind the tape of your life. And I know it's difficult, but you don't have to do it by yourself. You can ask God to help you get into a place. Rewind the tape. Find out where the enemy planted the seed that has stolen your identity and kept you in a place of unsurrender. When your heart is unsurrendered and, and it's become hardened and, and, and it's become callous and it's become those things because pain and over time, you know, when, when a, especially for women, it's hard sometimes, you know, working in the barbershop, I've heard a lot of conversations from men. And one of the main things that, that, that they're dealing with when trying to date a woman is that she's got so many jackets and he and he's pulling off this jacket to only find out there's another jacket underneath that and there's a and these are the things that women have used to protect their heart amen they're they're protecting their life because they don't want to repeat what happened and so they you know they're wearing this these jackets and men have to constantly peel back that relationship and that experience and that pain until they can finally get to who you really are 
and that takes a lot because why we have some on surrendered on healed hurts and on resolved issues unresolved issues it's a breeding ground for unforgiveness and unforgiveness they're like seeds they're like barriers they're like weights in our life they're like repellent to god because when you've got calluses over your heart when you've got a protective door and you got a protective shield over your heart it's hard to hear the knocking that god is is standing at the door of your heart it's hard to hear that knock i pray this morning that as god begins to knock on your heart that you will let him in that you will drop your defense mechanisms and you will allow yourself to stand naked before god and sometimes that's hard cuz you got stretch marks you got bruises you got pain whether you are a man or whether you are a woman i tr- trust me the moment that you do god's love will envelop you god's healing will begin to saturate and and infiltrate every area until those ashes become joy until until that sorrow becomes joy the joy of the lord is your strength is your strength i absolutely love you that's my time this morning i'm glad that you that you uh uh, hung in there with me this morning i love you family and friends for everyone that's uh given me the continued support again this is the the identity theft series if you have any questions or you or you have some prayer requests my email is right uh, on the bottom of the screen msk2k dot are you saved at gmail.com email me um, or go to my website www dot my sisters plural my sisters keeper 2k.com and uh and check out the website so you can get uh, a little bit more information on what our uh our ministry is all about and, and what we're really trying to to accomplish uh there's uh there's a link there if you want to order the book on Amazon or you can just go straight to Amazon and you can order of uh, the book Identity Theft the False Inheritance Exposing the Counterfeit God or if you're a native of Sacramento or stopping in the area or uh just passing through my city stop by Fades on 20th Barbershop uh get a line up a haircut pick up a copy until next week family I absolutely love you may God continue to bless you and I'm praying for you amen